Well, welcome to the horror um, Zoom meeting for horror writers and, and filmmakers. So I'm Christine Whitlock, the host. And hopefully my uh, power will uh, continue because we've got thunderstorms here. Uh, I'm in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. So uh, we had uh, six people uh, sign up. So we're expecting two more. I sent them a reminder notice. So maybe we'll wait a couple of minutes. See what happens. Then we can get uh, into uh, introductions and find out what uh, everybody's doing. Just gonna print off something. So Ian, uh, you came on first. You want to introduce yourself? Tell us where you're from and what you're working on. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm up in Muskoka, Ontario, um, and uh, primarily write uh, short stories. Um, just got finished up with a uh, bizarro YA novel. Um, so currently in kind of the beta reader uh, editing um, stage with that. Great. And Kristen, you want to uh, introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and what you're working on? My name is Kristen Shelley Olson, and I'm from Southeast Michigan. I think you have to get closer to your computer. We can't hear you too well. I'm Kristen Shelley Olson, and I'm from Southeast Michigan. Oh, great. The Detroit yeah. area. Yep. Yep. And I'm a filmmaker, an actress, and a writer. Oh, great. I also have some family that's set and other types of photography as well. And what about you, Bob? Uh, yeah, I'm um, Bob. I'm from Hamilton, Ontario. So I'm enjoying the thunderstorms with you <laughs> and uh, just been uh, finished the second draft of a short story that I've been working on and uh, going on the third rewrite of that. Oh, great. And MJ, you want to tell us about yourself? You got to unmute yourself. Hi, <clears throat> uh, I'm MJ, Sydney, um, Tacoma, Washington, and um, short story writer, also um, editing and publishing company. So, we've got several projects we're working on all at once. Oh, <laughs> great. So, I've uh, written, uh, directed, and produced four indie uh, feature films. Um, three were on um, Netflix, uh, Sharp Teeth, uh, Vampire Dentist, and uh, Marina Monster. And um, I'm adapting all of my scripts to novels. So I'm in the final edits for Vampire Dentist. And uh, the beginning of, of that novel was in the Horror Writers of Ontario's uh, first anthology a couple of years ago, and the, the book's still available um, on Amazon. And my DVDs are available on Amazon and uh, eBay. And uh, right now I'm uh, working on uh, two horror uh, scripts. Uh, one 
is uh, two locations and three actors, and the other is one location and uh, two main actors. So there, there seems to be a lot of uh, markets for um, uh, up to three locations and, and they like under five uh, actors in it. So uh, any of you who know um, Inktip, uh, you can uh, sign up for their newsletter and find out what uh, producers are, are looking for. Uh, and uh, but to to uh, submit to those producers, you have to pay. I think it's uh, sixty dollars U.S. for uh, four months to get their uh, weekly newsletter. It's uh, it's very good uh, area. Um, the other uh, two areas for uh, short stories, but they also have uh, markets for uh, novellas and uh, novels is Horror Tree, it's horrortree.com, and uh, darkmarkets.com. Uh, and also the Horror Writers of America, they have uh, markets, uh, but you have to be a member to, uh, to get onto that. But I also found on uh, Facebook, on the, the groups, there's uh, a group called Open Call Horror Markets. So uh, uh, to check out that. Does anybody else have any other markets that uh, they're submitting to or, or get notices on? Uh, Gwendolyn Keist has a uh, blog um, where she posts, it's usually once a month, uh, but she does uh, like a roundup of uh, different submission calls. Um, so it's a pretty good place to check as well. I found that uh, Duotrope has been a good um, source for calls for submissions. But is that to pay, you have to pay to get uh, the notices from them? Um, well, I th I th oh, five dollars a month. So that's not bad. Yes. And uh, the uh, conventions, the Horror Writers Convention in uh, England, it's been uh, postponed again. I was supposed to have gone in April and, you know, with all this COVID thing going on. And then it was delayed till uh, August 6th to 9th. And then I hear because things are still bad in England. Um, they uh, uh, have uh, postponed it again, but they haven't got a date. And uh, so, so I'm owed, uh, you know, over a thousand dollars from them because, uh, well, for the convention uh, registration, and then uh, by the end of uh, February, I had to pay in full for the accommodation, which was like eight hundred dollars Canadian. And now they're saying, you know, um, it's going to be minus the PayPal expenses. And because the hotels are uh, still on lockdown, they can't get, get us any refunds until the hotels go back, um, go back on board. So um, I had planned uh, a trip to Europe a, a week before that, going on a bus trip to Holland, uh, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. And uh, so that uh, trip, I got a two-year credit from uh, Trafalgar Tours. And um, uh, Air Canada gave me one-year credit. You know, so that's like five thousand uh, dollars up in the air, and then I was supposed to go from uh, Brussels to um, London, and then take the train to Scarborough in England, where the horror uh, conference was supposed to be. So I couldn't get a credit for, uh, or any refund for that. So through my travel insurance, I'm I put in a claim to get uh, that money back, two hundred dollars, and they were so unindated with uh, claims they said that they're so far behind so who knows when i'm gonna uh, get anything like that 
but the next um, Horror Writers uh, Association Conference is uh, next year in uh, Denver, Colorado. So they're already, um, you know, uh, telling people about that. But who knows how long this COVID thing's going to be going on because, you know, they're, they're now saying they're expecting a, a second wave in right. the fall. Yeah. And then, and then the states is having you know major problems in in some states. Mm -hmm. So thank God here in Canada, it's you know uh, they've been very strict, so we haven't had uh, any problems uh, along those lines. And um, today I got uh, an email from InfoList. Um, and uh, they have a, a free online course. It says micro budget filmmaking, no budget confidential, how to get your low budget film made and distributed. Does, does anybody get that? Uh, uh, that those emails? I'll put it in the, the chat, what the email is. So I get it from, Jeff Gund at infolist.com. So I would check out the, um, the website and especially this one because it's coming up uh, in the next few days. And they also had recently, uh, this past week, it says horror scripts wanted with unique concepts. So uh, check that out. Roadmap um, has been having last month a number of uh, free uh, webinars. So I would check um, their website. Uh, roadmap.com and and in their um, list of events they have all kinds that are for free of uh, filmmakers and uh, script writers that um, you know have, have made their films and they tell their story how, how they've done that <clears throat> And also um, the horror, the um, Directors Guild of Canada has their own YouTube channel and they uh, have uh, free webinars while well, it's on a week on a weekly basis. And uh, then they are placed on their YouTube channel so that you can um, uh, watch them if you can't attend the 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 webinar when when it's uh on zoom so that's certainly uh you know something to to check out and read c has uh, a lot of uh, writing um webinars and then they also have uh, a youtube channel that uh that you can uh check out Were you going to say something, Kristen? No. I'm just uh, okay. I'm paying close attention. Oh, good. So, uh, is there any uh, situations that, that are happening that that's contributing for you not uh, to move forward on your projects besides this COVID thing? They say that in Vancouver that. Uh, you know, they're started with production again. Yeah, they've just been having uh, you know, some health issues in the last you know, about year or so that we're just getting through those now and hopefully getting back to production to working on short films and stories. And where are you getting your actors? We make films too. 
together quite yeah. often. Mm -hmm. Found a few actors at a local access television channel. Mm -hmm. so yeah, because yeah, for yeah. my uh, uh, first three movies, I got local theater actors that um, I belong to a lot of theater groups. And so I saw them, you know, uh, act. And if you can uh, learn two hours of a play, because you have to know the two hours of the play so that you know if somebody flubs, that you may have to, you know, get your lines in earlier or work around the, their flubbing, if they can do that for two hours, that, then they can uh, learn their lines for, you know, when you videotape them. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. <laughs> because of course, in uh, theater, it's more broad, physical uh, being on stage, while a lot of uh, TV and uh, video, it's, it's a lot of facial expressions that that's uh, important. So Bob, you said you're working on uh, some short stories. Yeah, I'm actually pretty new into the horror genre. I'm more of a comedy writer, but this is uh, horror has always been sort of a love of mine. But I've been a writer for uh, you know, 20 years um, for various projects and things. Um, and I, I did write a horror script, a horror comedy script with a, a, a friend of mine that we actually got development for, but it just didn't go anywhere. And that was six or seven years ago. Um, and so now since COVID's happened, it's like uh, I've really just wanted to focus on writing i haven't i've never submitted to anything so this is actually kind of helpful for me and it's interesting because some things are kind of cross genre like um the two short stories that i've had uh accepted are kind of you know uh crime horror mm. you can say that that they're both uh uh, the one that just got accepted recently, <clears throat> and um, it's not going to be published till the the end of the year. So, depending on who I have to tell it to, uh, what group, whether I say it's crime or whether I say it's horror. So then, when you put it on your you know writing resume, you can put horror slash crime for uh, the short story. And and uh, and I was asking, when are you getting it published? Because I've already got other markets that uh, I want to send the the short story to, and that's the good thing about uh, short stories. You can keep selling them. Uh, like the first one that uh, I got uh, published, uh, I sold again in uh, December. So I'm I'm trying to get that one sold again, but there isn't that many. Re reprint uh, markets compared to original. And are you finding that, Ian? Yeah. Um, usually, uh, when you see the reprint anthologies, um, usually at a reduced rate, um, or they're looking for something super specific. Um, so it's kind of hard if you've got a story that you've sold elsewhere for it to fit um, kind of exactly what they're looking for in that uh, reprint. And I write a lot of uh, flash fiction. <clears throat> so the, the other day on uh, the horror tree, <clears throat> there was somebody for an anthology looking for uh, vampire stuff. So I sent them, um, something that was, I think, 750 words. And then they sent it back saying, sorry, it's uh, a, a thousand minimum to 5,000. And uh, thank God that they were also taking uh, reprints. So I uh, sent them that um, start of my vampire dentist uh, novel that had been printed with uh, 
the Horror Writers Association. So I haven't heard back whether they're they're going to accept that because, like I said, it, it's the beginning of the novel. So whether you know they want complete stories, that's not going to work. What about you, MJ? What what have you found uh, in contacting markets? Um, a lot of them, like uh, I think Ian was saying about like the reprint anthologies, they pretty much want they want your stuff for free. <laughs> it seems like. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and then a lot of the other markets I follow the uh, open call horror that you mentioned, and then several other ones on Facebook also. And there's a few good ones in there, and most of them, most of them seem to be just looking for whatever you want to give them for free, <laughs> which makes it hard. Yeah, I, I only submit to uh, paying markets. Right. I've, I found a couple on there. There's two or three of them that I found that I want to I want to get something written for before the middle of July. So hopefully I'll have time to do that. And that's the one good thing about the horror tree. It, it tells you in advance, you know, uh, some of the markets uh, don't close for a few months. So if something uh, stimulates you to, to write something, it's, it's good. You know, mm -hmm. if you can uh, write fast, uh, especially if it's uh, shorter. But, uh, you know, some of the stuff that, you know, they want at least 3,000 to 5,000 words that, that can be difficult uh you know especially if they're not paying uh that much yeah and it's interesting the ones that say that they're going to pay then you have to go back and remind them saying look at you know you said you're going to pay and i haven't gotten paid yet so so it's like they're embarrassed or they forgot that they're a paying market and then then they send you the money It was like, uh, what, smash words today, I got an email saying I'm getting $1.21 royalty. I'm thinking, oh my God, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I guess that's going to be US, so it might get up to $2, you know, with uh, the royalty. But... Uh, <laughs> And, and uh, that's the problem with my uh, movies being on uh, Amazon. They're on Amazon.com. And I got uh, a purchase of, uh, it was uh, Sharp Teeth, the first movie, from somebody in Canada who lives not far from here. Uh, uh, and, and then they had to pay the shipping, which was $15. And it, and it was like, Oh my God, like if, if she would have contacted me, she would have just paid $2, but because it has to go through, you know, the sale through Amazon and thinking that it's a foreign purchase because it's not in the States, it's from Canada and it's being, you know, manufactured and sent out from Canada. She gets, uh, you know, uh, all this, uh, she has to pay three times as much for postage as she does for the DVD which is uh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and then of course, uh, going to um, uh, Europe is, is even much more expensive. So I, I don't get too many uh, sales from, from Europe. I try to put my movies on uh, Amazon Prime, but what they wanted was uh, closed captioning on all of the movies and when I checked into it it was like over a thousand dollars per per movie to to put closed captioning on and then I heard you know uh it, it's not uh that great for for the return on Amazon Prime do you know anybody who's had anything on Amazon Prime no unfortunately no so I I don't know who you know And uh, so listing, you know, like a, of scripts, I have my scripts on um, uh, 
Script Revolution and on stage 32. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. And uh, the other day I had uh, a director from England just ask me about one of my short scripts. And uh, just before um, this Zoom meeting, he emailed me his, uh, or through Stage 32, he gave me his email address so I could send him the script. So then I, I read through the script again because it's only four pages and made some uh, little changes. So there isn't too many places that uh, where you can, you know, put your log lines down or, or uh, uh, your, your scripts for people to, to see. And the other one is uh, ISA, Independent uh, Screenwriters Association. But you have to pay uh, a yearly thing for them. And uh, InkTip, you can also, oh, you can post your scripts for free on InkTip, the, the shorts. But the, the features, you have to um, pay for them. So when, when you go on InkTip uh, on the, um, the main website, you just have to, to check around. There's a place where you can post them and, and uh, the information about your short will be up there for a year. So uh, it takes a couple of weeks to, to be posted on them. Movie Bites also uh, let you put your uh, scripts and log lines on and i think that's that's pretty inexpensive i think it's uh, 30 dollars for the the year and uh, the other um, place that uh, has a, a lot of um, uh, markets is uh, screenwriting staffing I must get two or three uh, markets um, a day from them. So they're even better than um, InkTip. And you could go into that uh, website and uh, check it out before you decide you know, to, to sign up for the, the premiums. You can get the, the free version first. So any plans for any future projects that you're working on, Bob? Uh, no, I, I mean, it'll, it'll, I, I kind of want to turn the short story I'm writing into a script at some point just to have. And, um, but that's, that's what's on the burner right now. So from a short script to a feature script? A short story to a short oh. script. Yeah. And you said that was a horror. That's a horror, yeah. So what kind of horror is it? Is it a is, uh, it, is it like a creature or no, it's a psychological oh psychological horror. horror. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I put it under. Um now, there hasn't been any uh creature features for a while yet. There hasn't been anything new with sharks. I noticed that. Yeah. 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 But no, shark movies for a while. Right. It's usually there's some every year, but it's been a while. When I made my third movie, which is called Marina Monster, it's about um, a bull shark in Burlington Bay uh, attacking during a, around the Bay Race. In my research, I found out that there are bull sharks in the Great Lakes. And they travel through to Lake Superior because they like it uh, cold and deep. And they are seen a lot at the mouth of the St. Lawrence River. But uh, after I did that research, I talked to some boaters in Lake Ontario and they said they have seen some fins oh, wow. in Lake Ontario. So uh, after doing um, Two water movies. I'll never go in the water again. <laughs> I'm I'm even afraid. Well, after Psycho, I'm afraid to take showers. I have a clear um, shower curtain, 
And then when I take baths, I like to take baths. I like the hot water. I always think of things coming out of the drains, you know, or that's the problem when you have a horror mind. <laughs> and and when my shark victims were, were in the marinas uh, waiting to get attacked by the, the shark, they said that they had been bitten by something. Not big, but in Burlington Bay. So uh, Bob, you you said you're from Hamilton? Uh, yeah, I'm from Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, so you know. So uh, yeah. uh, at some horror um, convention, I got uh, um, a picture. What is it? Is a lamp reel? Is that what they're called? Uh, it, it's like this um, eel with, with this big mouth with all these teeth around it. There's supposed to be a whole bunch of them in um, uh, Burlington Bay. And, and there was a, a big uh, problem with them at, at one point. So that's one of the, the horror scripts that I want to continue with my things in, in Burlington Bay. And because where I live, there's uh, three bodies of water. Uh, uh, Coots Paradise, where I made my first movie, uh, Shark Teeth. And then Burlington Bay, where I made Marina Monster, the sequel. And then... Uh, and then in Hamilton Bay, we also have have this um, that's going to be part of the script. We have this some kind of um, problem where I don't know if it's, you could call it a problem, but we have this tar that comes out of the bay, like it isn't from industrial waste, but it's this tar that keeps coming up, and. and um, so I have some interesting things dealing with that and, and lampreys uh, attaching themselves to people and but uh, but directing and producing is is very expensive for for feature films so I'll uh, let somebody else do that. <laughs> yeah. Where is the, the one? Where is the one in? You said there's a horror convention in Denver. In Denver, yes. When is that? Next year. Next um, year. It's usually in May, April or May. So I would check out the Horror Writers Association website. Oh, okay. And it's called StokerCon. I've heard of that. Yeah, StokerCon. So like this year it was supposed to be in uh, England, StokerCon UK. So I would I would put in 2021 StokerCon, and uh, Denver will come up. And uh, usually it's cheaper if you uh, register by the end of this year. And it it's not really that expensive uh, to go compared to other uh, uh, conventions that I've gone to. The, the most expensive convention I've gone to uh, was for the International Thriller Writers in New York. Just to go to the convention was over a thousand dollars. And then if you wanted to go to the rubber chicken dinner for the awards, like that's 250 US. Well, for us Canadians, it's like 1.4, you know, uh, exchange, especially these days. And And then, I mean, you get a deal on uh, the hotel, but you know, with all the taxes and, and all that kind of stuff, I think it was, I think I went uh, Wednesday to Saturday, it was like $3,000 for the, the hotel, you know, and then $1,000 for the convention and then, you know, airfare and food because only uh, some of the events gives you some nibbles so you have to have uh food so there's they're not having it this year the thriller writers they're having it uh, a virtual conference and that'll be um when is it july i think it's 6 to 14th so there's two levels of um, of 
of registration. They've got a lot of free things. So if you're into thriller writing, they've, they've got a lot of free things that you can uh, watch. They're having awards and uh, some people speaking for free. And then there's other kind of um, uh, seminars and that. So the ones that I'm taking, there's two together for $149 US. And then there's a pitch fest. You can take uh, on so many pitches. And then there's an agent uh, area. I've been twice to uh, Thriller Fest. Once in um, 2013 and then once in 2018. And when I went in 2013, um, some of the ladies that I talked to, they said that they were pitching their thriller books and all of the agents wanted to see either chapters or full books, all of them which uh, I've been to other uh, pitch fests, which, you know, you tell them what your story's about. You know, you got like five minutes to pitch them and then thanks, goodbye, you know, but uh, with those agent pits, you have to, you get a longer time. And it seems with the thrillers, they're uh, very open to um, getting more in that genre. And then today on Facebook, um, they had, I guess it was an ad, that there's this company looking for ghost writers, but it didn't have anything to do about uh, horror writers, but it had a lot of thrillers in that. So uh, I'll have to find that. And if you want me to send it to you later, and uh, the, do you know anybody who's done ghost writing? One of them, um, like I also run two uh, monthly Zoom meetings for script writers. So uh, one of the ladies there has done a lot of uh, ghost writing, but she says it's mainly business and nonfiction books that, that she does. But I haven't heard anybody doing ghost writing, ghost writing, haha, for <laughs> horror books. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about that either. But, you know, but, and they're not, none of them are children. I haven't heard of any um, children's books or series coming out, you know, long, um, the lines of now all of a sudden I can't think of that gentleman's name. Remember who had that series of all those kids' books? Oh, R.L. Stein. Yes, R.L. Stein. You know how <laughs> I think that was middle grade books. Yeah. I haven't heard of, of anybody doing a similar kind of it seems more fantasy. More fantasy series are going on than, than horror for middle grade. I That's used to read those a long time ago. I used to read those books a long time ago. Jarl Stein. Jarl Stein. Yes, and he's one of the founding members of the International Thriller Writers. So he was at the conventions uh, the couple of times that I was there. And then in 2018, it was, I'm terrible at names, um, the gentleman who did that um, Game of Thrones series, which I, R.R. Uh, Martin? Yeah, R.R. Yeah, Martin. George R.R. Martin. Yeah, George R.R. Martin. 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 Yes. Yeah, so he was the guest of honor um at the 2018 thriller writers which i kind of thought was a bit weird because i didn't think game of thrones was really thrillers but but uh he was there and uh he was very heavily um being uh secured because he said he went to some other convention 
where he was signing books and somebody came and gave him a hug and then everybody after that wanted a hug and which really slowed down the the writing and he says um you know the signing of the books and he says i will not do that again no physical contact right <laughs> <laughs> only signing of books <coughs> Yeah, that, that really slow things down having to do that every for everyone. Oh, and then last year at um, I went to the Dallas um, BoucherCon, the World Mystery Conference, and James Patterson was uh, the guest of honor. And they had a dinner for him and you could get one book signed and that was two hundred dollars that's better <laughs> yes and uh and that was was interesting because that was in um uh, i think it was that october and coming from canada i figured it was going to be hot in texas right you think uh dallas texas would be hot it was way colder than in canada Oh, wow. They were having all rains and winds, and they even closed the the pool there, and it, it was just terrible uh, weather while I was in Dallas. And and also I was very disappointed in Dallas because um, I took this uh, trolley ride around the city, and it it had very few trees. It's downtown Dallas is is all uh office buildings has anybody been to dallas i've never been to dallas but kind of doesn't dallas. doesn't surprise me yeah i couldn't believe how how um concrete jungle it was but but it was very interesting to to see where uh, uh john f kennedy was killed they had a big x on the street oh yeah and it seems some group keeps that um paint painted N not the city but some group right in in memory of him so if, do you have any other uh, resources uh to share mj from where you are on um, horror writing? Not really. Just most of them, most of the open call submissions I get are from the Facebook groups. There's like seven or eight of them that are because they're free. And people post them. So that's where we post a lot of our stuff too. So. And what about do you use that um, horror tree or dark markets? Um, I use horror tree. I keep forgetting about dark markets. <laughs> I haven't gotten any uh, notices from dark market. So I checked it uh, today and they didn't have too many new things, you know, uh, so I guess they haven't been sending out any notices if they haven't got too many, you know, new things if they only got one or two. And uh, uh, of course their uh, backlist is expiring now that, you know, we're almost at the end of June. There isn't too much into uh, August. It'd, it'd be interesting to know about uh, how online sales are, are going for any of these um, online magazines or an anthologies. Because I think MJ, you were on the the last uh, <clears throat> last months, right? Of this, yeah. Board. And uh, Andrew Robertson was going to have an anthology, but he dropped out of that. Mm. So there's one, you know, gone for that. So I don't know if people are, are buying the anthologies or, you know, they're, or they're, they're not uh, doing that. So they're not uh, sending out or they've, you know, reach their peak for the first six months now, they've got enough stories in that uh, to produce them. Because if you think everybody who's in lockdown, you know, and and tomorrow, 
is the first day I can go to the library here in Hamilton, um, I had to make an appointment of when I could go to pick up my book between 1230 and one. And, and I have like 20 things on on hold, but only two have come through. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh my God, so I have to keep, you know, making new appointments, uh, reservations for, um, to pick up all these other books, you know, instead, mm -hmm. I guess you can't go in and, and look at any of the books or any of the DVDs or CDs or anything. You, you have to make everything on reservation. That sounds like a real hassle. <laughs> Is your libraries open where you are? Um, no, they're not. They're not still. Yet. Yeah, I think ours have, um, are still appointment only right now. Oh, so at least you can get into them. Yeah. But you have to make your um, reservations online for the books first. Yeah. And then when they come in, you have to make a reservation to pick them up. Is that correct? Yeah. That's about, about that. Because, you know, if this continues, then, it, you know, I hate to think that's going to be the norm. You know, how, how are you going to, you know, um, check on things? You know, like some people like to look at the book and, and uh, read a bit about it and, you know, be, because my my husband isn't very uh, computer savvy, so I'm ordering books for him, and and then he can't remember which James Patterson's he's read or not, and and he today, the the malls have just started opening up, so he he went to uh, Eastgate in our town, and um, he says he wants to buy a pair of shorts and a shirt, but he wants to try them on, and they won't let them try them on. Oh yeah, yeah they, they they closed the um the waiting room, the rooms. dressing rooms. Yeah, they closed them. And and he says with men's shorts, you know, it's it's uh because they're manufacturing them in, in all these different countries, they're not all the same size. And I says, Well, can't they measure around the waist? Because he <laughs> says 32 is it could be too tight and 34 could be too big. So, but he was happy. He went to sports check and, and got uh, two pairs of shoes. I guess they let him try them on, the shoes. So yeah. he got them on sale. Now the, the new thing that uh, people are, are doing with any of their uh, work is of course putting the readings on um, YouTube. Well, I have my trailers for my my movies on uh, YouTube, and of course this is going to be on uh, YouTube on my YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel is Christine J Whitlock. So uh, tomorrow it'll be be up, and um, I'll send you all uh, the link. So this will be posted up there uh, unedited. My films, our films are also on YouTube. Yeah. They're on your YouTube channel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Question showing. You should um, post it in the chat. Po post oh, your. Um, See if I can figure out how to do that. <laughs> Is that at the bottom? There's a chat, oh, and I you see. can. I got it right here. Well, I'll have to look at that in a second. But that's uh, something new. If you've got um, a good microphone on your um, laptop or whatever tablet that you're using. And then uh, read an excerpt from your book or or a bit of your short story, and uh, post it on your YouTube channel because right now YouTube channels are free. Yeah. 
And then some of those channels, oh my God, so many advertisements. And, oh, I and what I can't that. stand is on regular television, besides the advertisements every few minutes, they are now putting advertisements at the bottom of the screen while you're trying to watch the program. Yeah. That's, that's unbelievable. It's like, and plus you're paying for your cable. So you, you pay in the States for a cable service for your television. Yeah, we have, we have cable. Yeah. Like we have in, in Canada. Yeah. So you're, you're paying for cable plus then you're paying, then you got to listen to all these advertisements or, or, watch them at, at the bottom of the screen because you, you don't know whether it's well in canada we haven't had an alert for a little while they used to do alerts on on all of the electronic devices if some child was abducted or somebody was abducted that sort of thing and ian where did you say you from again I'm up in uh, Huntsville, Muskoka oh, area. Yeah. Is there um, a camera club or a movie club up there? Uh, not as far as I'm aware. Um, but uh, I would yeah, check I think, into that. Yeah. Um, I was going to say one really good resource. I don't know if anyone uh, knows about or has done the HWA mentorship program um i just got off of it um if you're a member at any level uh they pair you with uh like a pretty established writer um but anyway so if that's uh they do it for both prose writing and script writing um so yeah that was that was one of the most valuable educational experiences i've ever had uh, in terms of creative writing. So um, I would highly recommend that. You don't have to pay anything. Uh, if you're an HWA member, it, uh, it's just covered within your membership fees. Did you have to wait very long to get a member, mentor? No, uh, I think I, I mean, I guess it's relative, but I think I applied in August of last year. Um, and then the mentorship started in January. And was it for uh, a short story or a script? It originally started with a novella. Uh, we cut it down to a short story. Um, but yeah, so you, you have to have like a polished piece when you apply um, and you send them whatever you're working on, if it's a script, if it's a novel, if it's a short story. Um, and then they pair you with someone who, uh, uh, is either in the same kind of subgenre, right? So, um, like I, I usually write sort of weird horror or kind of bizarro stuff, um, and so they paired me with uh, um, Lee Murray, uh, who's a New Zealand writer, um, and uh, so our styles kind of lined up. Um, so yeah, so I would highly uh, recommend applying for that if you can. Um, I know that there's a pretty big backlog right now. Uh, so my mentor had uh, myself and two other mentees at the same time, because uh, there's so many people applying for the program. So it's, uh, yeah, I think uh, the longer you wait, um, the longer it's gonna take to get into that program at this point. So Nick, have you been turned into a dark roast coffee? Or can we see you? Nick has just come on board. You can unmute yourself. Mute start video. <sighs> hello, hello, Nick. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Hi, sorry, a little bit slow to, to plug my webcam in there. No uh, problem. So if you want to introduce yourself, tell us uh, where you where you live and what you're working on. 
Uh, I live in Toronto. Um, currently, uh, just working on getting by, but uh, helping a friend collaborate uh, a little bit on her first uh, horror movie. Um, that she's trying to figure out how to uh, script and shoot entirely from home. So I'm trying to guide her through that. So is this a short or a feature? It's her first short that she wants to test out the concept for and then see if she can develop it into a feature. Um, she's never really produced on her own. So, uh, and we're both horror aficionados. And so we both are kind of helping to flesh out her concept a little bit. Um, yeah, that's, it's in the beginning stages right now. And what kind of uh, horror is it? Uh, isolation horror, obviously, because of what's going on. Uh, she wants to be able to uh, shoot it, uh, found footage, uh, uh, isolation horror movie with some supernatural, um, uh, like uh, demon possession uh, elements uh, at home. But she wants to use it as a launch platform or a testing platform to try out different horrific gags that she's seen in other horror movies. And so she keeps coming to me with questions of, Nick, uh, I'd, I'd love to, I'm an editor and visual effects artist. And so she keeps on asking me, so how do I chop a person's head off? How do I, <laughs> how do, I do this without bloodying up my house? What, how do I do digital blood? And so those are the most of the questions I get every day. And so this is going to be shot hopefully like in a house? In her house, yeah. She, right. uh, uh, unfortunately, she lives with her husband, but she is, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, with him. Um, she's also one of the one of the unlucky people who are uh, are susceptible to to the virus, and so she really has to stay in. So she's going a little stir crazy. So she's trying to funnel that into uh, her the, the character of her uh, of her horror movie. Yeah, in, in my uh, first horror movie, Sharp Teeth, my uh, brother-in-law uh, allowed us to uh, shoot uh, in, in the company he was working at uh, on the weekends for their office scenes and, and also uh, in, in the, the parking lot. Oh. <laughs> and then um, my uh, se second movie, and I guess third, uh, another uh, person I knew let me shoot in, in uh, their business offices and um, uh, a lot of the vampire dentist, which is about a 24-hour uh, dental office, humans during the day and vampires at night. So they're in this uh, dumpy warehouse. And uh, so the, the back of this business was this warehouse uh, area with you know an old uh, couch and all kinds of uh, crates and all kinds of stuff and and so we made it into this uh, dumpy um, dental office so knowing people is is uh, is very important figure out all all the friends you have uh, and and where they can uh, let you uh, film oh yeah and and my first movie my aunt let me film in her living room and in Vampire Dentist we filmed going up the stairs to the attic where uh, I used to live sometimes with with my aunt as, as a child depending when my parents split up and uh, and so I always had this uh, these horror dreams of the the doors opening so i i wrote that to have the vampires opening that the vampires were behind these doors trying to attack this girl so that was that turned out into the movie so you know watch out what you dream about or what you experience as a child that you know you can put into uh movies so uh i, I was very happy that that my uh aunt uh, let me do that and then my mother, who, of course, I got her to, to see, she came to the premieres of all my movies. And I says, well, can I film something in your house? And she said, no. <laughs> she, she probably heard from my aunt about, 
you know, all these people in, in, in your house and, and uh, all the stuff that, uh, all the money that shot. they track in. That what? You get one shot and then they learn their lesson. And then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but my aunt let me do it two different years, right? So, so that was great. But, and then, uh, then that finished with, with that. So, so you have, have to be, um, friendly to all your relatives and friends because you never know when, when you might want to, to use their backyard or shed or or whatever to, to film in or basement or whatever or, or need them to make cookies or you know make the coffee mm -hmm. because that that's what I, I've told anybody in filmmaking you got to give them the three C's you know like everybody doesn't care about volunteering as long as they get the three c's so craft good food credit their name on the, the credit list and a copy of the movie and and i got into uh a big fight with with my cast and crew because like i had a uh, hundred cast and crew with the first two movies and about 120 with the third one because we had a lot of sailing uh, boats because we were filming on um, uh, Burlington Bay for the shark movie. So uh, as it turned out, besides everything else I was doing, I also made the food every uh, night before. And I used to get those little tiny croissants, cut them in half, and, and put uh, uh, different uh, cold cuts in them. And then I'd cut up um, a bunch of cheeses in little tiny strips so that they could put cheese with it. Plus I'd buy all kinds of um, chips and junk food and pop and always have coffee. So everybody was very happy. So the one time I did not bring the uh, little croissants. Oh man, there was a revolt. Oh. <laughs> so. So uh, you have to watch what, what you bring for food to your, so junk food is very good for keeping up their sugar and their salt intake. I found yeah. like those party trays, I buy her before she told me about those party trays. Oh yes. Plus uh, lunch meats and lunch cheeses. And yes, bread. yes. I just put two of those. Everybody was happy. Yes. Yep, and, and uh, cookies and little things like that mm -hmm. because you're just feeding them while feeding them lunch. I mean, we would start early, but I'd make sure that we were finished like by five o'clock, six o'clock the latest because no way was I going to pay for dinner. You know, every, we would yeah. mm -hmm. just shoot on the weekends and uh, you know, everybody would, uh, we usually just shot uh, one day a week on, on Sunday so that people could get, get home to, for their dinner. Mm -hmm. If I had a bigger budget, I could serve them something better. <laughs> but then, like, you also have to have somebody looking after the stuff to keep it clean, you know, especially if you're in some, uh, you know, commercial building or somebody's home that, things are clean and, and, you know, the garbage is, is put away and all that kind of stuff because, you know, you don't want to have uh, uh, bad blood because you, you've been there, especially if, if you're, uh, if they're relatives or, or your boss, or, you know, or any, anything like that. And so, of course, when we did the, the vampire movie, and we were shooting the the vampires like the the makeup time would uh, would take so long. And this one woman, I was so surprised. Um, she was normally in real estate, but she really got into uh, the makeup and and designed all the makeup. And and they were just excellent. Uh, the stuff the stuff. But people had to come in early, and. Uh, so I had auditions for the vampires. So um, so people had to come dressed and in makeup um, for the, the vampire parts. And these two women were absolutely spectacular, you know, like 
great makeup and and uh, and costumes and that because I, I wasn't providing the the costumes I was providing the makeup some of the jewelry and that so when I called them and said okay you have to be at this location at seven in the morning on a Sunday for makeup they says no we're not, we're not getting up that early it's like what after you know all of that uh time and, and energy to get dressed up as vampires and, and then then you don't want to, to be in the movie. It was, it was unbelievable. <laughs> oh, and then I had a, a really good time when I was uh, doing auditions for the shark movie for the shark victims because they had to come in their bathing suits and the girls in their bikinis and they had to stick their arm above their head and I said you have to close your eyes and pretend that your hand is in the water you're tinkling your fingers in the water and a, then a shark comes and bites your hand off and I want to hear you scream because I wanted good screamers you know mm -hmm. with the the shark attacks so of course some people were not good screamers but some had good lungs <laughs> And two of the young girls were, were very uh, <laughs> well endowed in their tiny bikinis. And so they, they were a big hit on the movie. <laughs> so I have lots of stories about making micro budget indie movies. But uh, anybody who has access to theater groups or uh, like camera clubs and film clubs because that's where you can get uh, you know people to help you because you know you know you need people with the boom and the lights and and moving stuff around and, and stuff like that so it's it's important to tap into into your community and you know uh, especially if you know people who are going to be wanting to do their own movies later on you know okay you help me now and then uh, i'll help you later so nick you said you do some of this professionally yeah uh, yeah um uh i've been editing uh horror uh, horror movies for uh, i don't know a long decade i guess um uh, mostly low budget, micro budget ones. So the ones that tend to have a lot of stories that happen on set. Um, uh, yeah, a lot of like creature features and you know the, the, the blood and guts ones because those are the more fun ones to do. Yeah. And and these are all visual, um, not practical blood and guts. These these are all. That's mostly it. practical. Oh, um, mostly practical. Yeah, the company is uh, called Black Fawn Films. They make a lot of uh, uh, fairly gory, uh, pretty creative horror movies, but they tend to do a lot of employ a lot of practical uh, effects artists uh, and uh, stuntmen to do their gags live on set, and because uh, uh, you know it's pretty complicated and pretty uh, pretty expensive to have to go in post and you know do it that way so uh yeah a lot of their gags tend up to be based on the traditional uh blood and guts gags of horror movies from the 80s and 90s um from you know people punching you know their you know fists through people's bodies or uh you know demonic dogs that uh you know rip people to shreds uh or uh, one one movie that uh, we that i worked on called bed of the dead um ended up uh, one scene involved, uh, you know, what seemed like a swimming pool's worth of blood uh, being dumped onto two unfortunate actresses that were on the the title bed, you know, the, the, this demonic bed, which is a giant, you know, ginormous bed um, possessed by a hellish demon of some kind. Um, so we have one shot, one shot only to release this vat of blood in slow motion on top of these two actresses. And uh, we made good use of that shot throughout, you know, for in the trailer and the movie itself. Um, 
we got it good, but uh, that was you know, one that yeah, was pretty fun to be on set for. <laughs> and is um, Chris Jero still involved with the company? Chris Jones? Jero. Jero, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he, Jero. Jero, yeah, he was my cameraman on Marina Monster. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, uh, he is. Um, I think in a different capacity, he's still part of the company, but he's also producing, directing much of his own stuff. Uh, I think largely music videos and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I remember hit Chris. He was a pretty solid guy. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, um, he helped my uh, DOP a lot. He was uh, the cameraman and uh, um, I spent three months on Burlington Bay filming boat races. Um, they would have boat races um, twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays through the Royal Hamilton Yacht Club. It was supposed to have been through them and the Burlington Sailing and Boating Club, but uh, their committee boat uh, had some kind of problem, so we couldn't use it. So we could only use the Royal Hamilton Yacht Club. And I said, can my cameraman, which was Chris, can he come on board every night that we were out and film the boat races? And they said, as long as I was there for the whole season, I guess from May to October or whatever, on the committee boat to run the races. So I ran the races for however long it was going on. And uh, so we got absolutely tons of, of footage it's like oh my god uh, i can make some more uh you know water movies from uh, all the the footage i have <laughs> that, that's the one thing with filmmaking you know that uh and with special effects you can put different uh coloring or effects to it and 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 change something that people may have seen and, and it looks entirely different. Yeah, like, uh, uh, doesn't trauma films do that? Um, trauma films, uh, they, I think for the last 20 years, they've reused the same, uh, there's a shot of a car exploding that I think they've managed to rework into every single one of their movies. They just recycle the same shot over and over again somehow in their movies. <laughs> Well, well, this is it. With special effects, you can make it small or medium or large and and then make it spin or whatever else, right, with special effects. And it's the, the big expense is in the initial shooting. Yeah. So why not, you know, keep, keep using it over and over again? Yeah. Get your money worth. So is there anything you're working on personally in, in uh, horror writing or filming? Other than this project uh, with my friend, um, I tend to be the guy who, uh, like, again, that I work on other people's stuff. I used to shoot my own stuff, but that was about 20 years ago. Um, uh, I learned very early on that I'm, I'm not cut out for to, to be a director, at least just yet. And now I'm getting the full idea that, yeah, maybe I might be. Um, so uh yeah my friend and i are just trying to help her along with her uh her short movie and see what we can do during the lockdown uh to you know make a, a short horror that uh, both of us like we're both big horror movie fans and so we have a, a high standard that we're trying to shoot for um you know try to legitimately scare people with it so we'll see if we can hit that mark and then uh, maybe we you know we, she and I have worked together pretty good so far, so who knows, we might, uh, this might blossom into something. We might uh, try some other uh, products as well. We were saying earlier, we haven't seen too many um, creature features recently, <coughs> especially shark movies. There hasn't been a new shark movie for a bit. Oh, uh, well, there was the Meg, like I know, like the, the bigger one, but I haven't seen much of the, yeah, the smaller there one. There was a 47 meters down sequel. Yeah, yeah. I never saw that one, but yeah, I heard about that. And then there was one, uh, oh God, what was, I watched it and it was pretty impressed up until the very end. I'm, I'm blanking on the title, but it was very, um, it was about a, a female surfer who was stranded 
out on the ocean. Oh, um, uh, the shallows? The shallows, yeah. Yeah. I really like the concept of it. And uh, you, uh, other than yeah. I think the ending, <laughs> the ending made me laugh a bit, but I, I thought yeah. that was a pretty solid concept. She was hanging out on a dead whale for. Her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like Castaway meets Jaws. Yeah. And there's also a uh, crawl, which I saw in theaters last year. It was a, a, a alligator movie, yeah. which was actually really, really good, really fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed that one as well. Mm-hmm. Although apparently, don't watch it with uh, with a full radian. <laughs> um, they, no. They're not a fan of that at all. <laughs> they they uh, kept on criticizing the accuracy of the hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> And what about vampire movies? Has there been any new vampire movies lately? It's been a while since I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's been quite a while since I've seen it. Yeah. Oh. Not I'm unless you count the uh, What We Do in the Shadows series. That's currently ongoing. Right. Yeah. I understand they're going to make Anne, Anne Rice's vampire books into the series. No. Oh yeah, I heard that too. But she's gotten away from uh, horrors and, and vampire, and I heard got, gotten into more historical in her writing. Yeah, I, th- I, I think I think I think that's what she writes now. I think they're talking about going back, doing the the vampire books and the Mayfair witches books, turning that into a series. And and what about a Stephen King novel? Is any anything going into production for anything mm-hmm. that he's been doing? Nothing new. I'm hoping he does something new. I mean, other, other, other than the fifty that are probably in production right now. <laughs> yeah. The stand. I did see uh, a friend of mine shared it with me, but. He had tweeted something recently about uh, a, a, a horror novel or something that he wanted to write, but probably never would, which was going to be Jason Voorhees, where it was called I, Jason. It was going to be- oh, yeah, he's talking about oh, that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I think would be amazing if he did that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it would be. Because they keep saying that the, the studios like to do sequels of, of things and then when they can't think of a sequel they think of a prequel mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah that know. happened that's you halloween for sure i feel like mm-hmm. and when they can't think of a prequel they just reboot it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And MJ, what's your bunny's name? This is Cookie. Cookie. I was looking at that. I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Hi. Yeah, she was throwing a fit in her cage over there in my office, so I had to go get her out. (laughs) She heard me talking, and I wasn't talking to her. (laughs) She was lonely. She wanted some human contact. has there been a horror movie about rabbits? Night of the Lepus. Uh, Bonicula is a popular, uh, well, it's a middle grade uh, book from the 80s, late 80s, I think, that they yeah. turned into a cartoon series, a short lived cartoon series. Oh, I read those books. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. It brings me back just thinking about that. <laughs> Pretty much the most famous rabbit horror movie would be Night of the Leaves. Mm-hmm. From the early Next 70s. Night of the Leaves, L E P U S. Is uh, before us Kelly was in that. It was I think it was I think it was Australian. Well, I wrote um, a TV pilot um, for children's series, The Cat Homes and Bunny Watson Mysteries. And uh, 
I've uh, also uh, adapted it to a book that I'm trying to sell. Because I had a rabbit, I think, for eight years. I miss him terribly. I have two cats, but he, he was my boyfriend. <laughs> we got made you. Uh, but my male cat is is so jealous of the the girl. He's so possessive of. He'll whack the the girl if she comes near me. Oh, Jesus. And he's nineteen years old. I never knew animals to be so possessive. Yes. <laughs> and and I think birds out in in the backyard when you watch them, they look like they're possessive and jealous and you know territorial out there mm -hmm. <laughs> other than alfred hitchcock's birds has there been anything with birds birdemic oh lord <laughs> <laughs> uh god there was one that was kind of uh, it's in the like the old school Godzilla era of movies. I'm blanking on the title though. No, uh, now it was like the uh, Godzilla-esque bird, so giant rubber puppet bird that uh, uh, was supposed to be like the size of uh, uh, like a Navy warship, the size of this bird that just flew around terrorizing the world. Would that be Rodan? Uh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, because Rodan was supposed to be like a pterodactyl kind of monster. And Guillermo del Toro, um, is he working on something these days? Any horror? Hmm. Because he he's done a lot of filming in Hamilton. And um, uh, was it? Uh, last week, when I had my scriptwriter uh, Zoom meeting, I was asking uh, one of the producers, because I was told that uh, he was planning to buy a film studio here in Hamilton. Oh, wow. Mm. I remember word was a while back that he was building some studios in town uh, in Toronto here. I'm not sure if that ever happened. But I knew that he was really, he took a liking to, to Canada and this area. So he was trying to move a lot of his production up here. I went to his exhibit at the Royal, at the Art Gal Gallery of Ontario. They had an exhibit of, um, I guess it's like Man and the Monsters. And, uh, and I got his book and a t-shirt and... Uh, it was a, it was a good exhibit. It showed a lot of his props and and things and paintings from his house. And drawings and things like that. It was uh it, it was worth the drive to Toronto. <laughs> Back then I tried to get the early um Sunday morning. <clears throat> Cuz uh Toronto's uh, um, well, it's what 75 kilometers from uh, Hamilton, but uh, it can take you three hours to get there during rush hour. So uh, I only like to go like first thing Saturday or Sunday morning when you know it could take you uh, 45 minutes to an hour and 15. But uh, well, but. Uh, now, of course, it's, I don't know if the, the traffic has picked up. I know going to uh, Niagara, my, my husband, he goes to visit his uh, mother once a week in Vineland from Hamilton. He says uh, the traffic's really picked up. It's back to normal here. So, so Nick, uh, is the traffic picked up in Toronto? It has. Not, it's still pretty blissful compared to what it used to be. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's not the ghost town that it, that was uh, just a couple months ago. It, you could have shot, you know, a cannon 
Cannonball, you know, down some of the major streets and not hit a car at all. So, but uh, it's starting to get a little busier now. Um, you know, not, not as hellish as it was a year ago, thank God. But now you're in stage two. You, you just got uh, freed to stage two. Like, I think we got stage two last Friday. Yeah. I so think the, yeah. Wednesday, I think you're, you uh, are now in stage two. Yeah. So there's a chance for idiot drivers to get back out there again. Um, <laughs> uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, that also means that some of us will be back to work as well. Because there were a bunch of productions that had to hit the pause button. Um, including, I, I forgot about this, you mentioned Del Toro. He was in the middle of shooting one of his movies, his next movie, Nightmare Alley, uh, based on a book, 1940s uh, super, uh, psychological horror movie. Uh, so that had to be halted in the middle of it. So that's a movie that has to resume before the end of the year, hopefully. And um, last week we had a, a writer producer from Vancouver and he says they've started up again. Uh, back in, in Vancouver, so. Mm. <laughs> and that's where they do a, a lot of the, the Hallmark movies down in uh, Vancouver. Yeah, now's the time of year that you know, all the Christmas movies get shot. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what are we going to watch this year if we don't have our Hallmark movies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's another script I'm working on is a uh, Hallmark mystery Christmas uh, script. So that producer sent me uh, a mystery Hallmark uh, script, but now I have to get a Hallmark Christmas script and then combine the two <coughs> for, uh, for my idea. I've, I've got the log line, the synopsis, and uh, the beats. Now I just have to, to write it out. The, and Last week when I said to him, oh, there's not enough uh, hours in the day, he says, well, I'm waiting for that script because <laughs> he's uh, directed for Hallmark before, so. I was say, does, does that mean you, you have to then cast with some of the actors who have been in the Hallmark movies? Well, I wouldn't get involved in that. I, I just want to write. I don't know, if you, if you dreamt it. No, no, I'm not into writing, uh, directing or producing anymore. I did that years ago. I, I wouldn't mind being on set, you know, flying to Vancouver for a couple of weeks because he says that they're shooting 12 to 15 days for the Hallmark movies. Pretty fast. So I, I do on the, the weekend binge on the, the Hallmark movie. I watched uh, one uh, Saturday night about... Uh, uh, love in in the uh, olive groves it's supposed to have been like California and they don't kiss until like 10 minutes before it ends <laughs> <laughs> they're all very proper but with the with the mystery one that I'm writing well the one I I'm proposing it, it doesn't have a murder. It's got uh, all of these uh, uh, thefts through it. But if it's too um, clean for them, then I, I could put in some murders for a different version. And then... Um, for uh, courses that uh, uh, are going on, uh, Ubemi, that's, uh, I, I don't know if that's just Canada or, or that's uh, in the States too, Ubemi, do you have that? It's online courses. Udemy? Yes, yeah. You, okay. I said uh, it wrong. Or maybe I have all of my life, I don't know. <laughs> Because um, MJ and I know a lady who uh, uh, teaches horror writing, Sephra Jerome. And uh, she's written, what, uh, 20 horror books. And uh, she's, she has an online course. And uh, so I thought, 
they had it on sale for I think thirteen dollars. So so I bought it. So I still have to go through and uh, and and check it out. They had uh, a few different people um, uh, teaching horror writing courses. Has anybody taken any courses on uh, horror writing or know anybody who no. teaches it? Others in uh, Suffrage Iran? I can clap. Who? I took a filmmaking class. I never took a normal class. A filmmaking class. I'm taking. Yeah, so like I said, you should check out that one, the micro budget filmmaking, a free online class, no budget confidential. How to get your low budget film made and distributed. Uh, that was through infolist.com. That email just came through today, Nick. It's a free uh, online webinar. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, I'm checking out that uh, the uh, how to write your own horror movie, uh, how horror novel that you mentioned. I'll have to check that out for later. Yeah, because uh, they have uh, uh, various discounts on those courses because I think it was like a sixty dollar course, and I think I got it for thirteen. See that? Yeah, it's like seventy five dollars normally, and now it's seventeen. Sure. Yeah. What else am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, this might be the time that you want to consider doing your own course, online course, can you? On horror special effects. I would if I knew what I was doing. I thought you've been doing it for 20 years. Yep, still learning. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, with with our technology, it's continuous. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, I wasn't, uh, I've always been aware of you, Demi, but I actually haven't uh, been on it in some time. Um, so I didn't know that uh, like a, a course like that existed. I'm wondering what else there is now. So I'll, I'll probably be going down that rabbit hole this evening just to see what else there is. Um, but you as an editor, Nick, uh, how is, how is the uh, footage that they're getting from um, cell phones? You know, they said they're making these movies with cell phones. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't gotten a fully cell phone shot movie yet. However, oftentimes when they've, uh, a lot of the, the movies that I have worked on, um, they have a very limited time to shoot. So they, you know, shoot in 20 days frantically. And then uh, if later on they have to go back and shoot a pickup shot of some kind, sometimes all they can afford is a phone and, you know, a light and the director and that's it. So uh, if they can do it, then, you know, rather than, you know, pay uh, someone, you know, a thousand dollar rental fee for their, their equipment and, uh, you know, trying to assemble the crew again, going out with, uh, the latest Samsung phone is just good enough. So I'm waiting for anybody, the next brave filmmaker who wants to shoot their entire movie on a cell phone. That's why actually uh, my friend, you know, she said, uh, yeah, my phone's good enough. I'm, I think I'm, I'm just gonna shoot with the cell phone. I, I said, that sounds like a challenge, let's do it. It could be done. But what about when it's blown up? Like, uh, can it be blown up for uh, some you know, phones? Theater. Some phones, yes. Um, uh, I can't remember. Someone, uh, a filmmaker uh, from Australia, sent me some footage recently that he wanted me to look at, and uh, I have to double check what the uh, what the phone model is. But it's uh, the footage that came in was. <laughs> just as beautiful as you know some of the some of the most cinematic stuff that I've had you know uh, sent to me for these movies uh, and I would trust in it very much that if you blow that up to theater screen it will it'll hold up so some phones yes not every phone but some phones are doing really really well with, uh, with how they're shooting some footage now so that's good and 
bad, right? Because if, if these uh, filmmakers can can do it themselves on uh, their phone, you know, then they're uh, eliminating all this crew. So that's great for uh, cost. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, double-edged sword. But so far, until a phone is able to uh, replace me, I'm not too worried about it. Um, but uh, yeah, some uh, sometimes that that makes more problems than it uh, that really helps the production process along. It all depends. Every movie has its problems, so. But but I can't see anything other than a very short film being uh, edited, you know, on your phone because, you know, like. Uh, I took a Directors Guild of, of Canada um, weekend workshop on uh, editing. We shot um, a film and then we had to edit it our, ourselves and that's on my YouTube channel. It's a 10 second film. It's a horror film and it's called um, Hide and Shriek, H-Y-D-E and Shriek. like. Uh, uh, like hide and seek, but, mm -hmm. and uh, so the people in our class, we we had to get together, and on this weekend, and this was at uh, Sheridan College, um, and and on the grounds we had to go, I don't know what they gave us, uh, what kind of camera, and uh, we had to shoot it and then bring in the footage and edited uh, ourselves. So that's the only time I, I ever edited was this 10 seconds. <laughs> that was enough for me. Yikes, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I've edited some things on the phone. It's not fun. It definitely, uh, you know, it takes, you know, an hour to do something that normally would take 10 seconds sometimes. <laughs> And I had said earlier that the Directors Guild has their own uh, YouTube YouTube channel, so um, you should check that out because they have uh, other directors and uh, filmmakers giving uh, weekly Zoom meetings. I know there's one uh, tomorrow night, and um, and the other ones um, are on uh, their YouTube channel. I can't watch one tomorrow night because I'm watching one by Sisters in Crime. That, that's a problem. There's all of these uh, associations are having these uh, Zoom meetings or webinars and, and especially if they're free, you know, I, I like to take advantage uh, of uh, as many as I can, especially if it has to do with uh, writing. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I haven't heard of any uh, with uh, the Horror Writers uh, Association, and that's why I'm doing this for uh, horror writers and uh, filmmakers. And, and then I think I mentioned the first and third Monday of, of the month, I do it for script writers and uh, filmmakers. So uh, we have a, a, a different crowd for that. And um, we had one gentleman from um, Israel who had to, you know, wake up at two in the morning to to come and listen to us. So, so that was interesting, and and uh, I'm posting these notices, you know, on Facebook and and LinkedIn and Stage Thirty Two. Is there any place else that I should be listing this? These notices. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how friendly you are with Reddit, um, but I'm be willing to bet that there are some subreddits for uh, horror writers uh, that uh, you could probably post the link to, and they uh, people would be interested that uh, would see it there. How did you find out about this, Nick? It's Facebook, which is astonishing because I try not to go on there anymore. <laughs> I just happened to be on, and I can't, yeah, I can't remember where I, I saw, in one of the groups I'm in, you posted the, the lake, and I, uh, I can't, yeah, I, I try to go in for five seconds a day on Facebook. 
uh, and somehow I saw the post and, and thought, yeah, that sounds like, that sounds interesting. So you got me for my five seconds a day, you got me. Yeah, well, I, I tried to post on all the, the horror writers or filmmakers um, on Facebook. And then, like I said, uh, LinkedIn and um, Stage 32 for the script writers and the um, filmmakers, producers. Because uh, last month when I did this, um, a gentleman that I, I uh, knew came on board and he said that his director was looking for a horror script. So the, um, the one horror script I'm working on, um, I had uh, sent him the synopsis, but I haven't heard back, so I'll have to follow up with him on that. That's the problem. It's, you know, the, the waiting, the, right. especially from, uh, if you submitted to any of these markets or uh, these anthologies waiting around for, you know, they say, oh, we'll get back to you in three weeks or a month and, and it, you know, goes on and on. Mm -hmm. So I, I usually give them a few more weeks and, and then I do my follow-up. And then lately I've, I've had a couple that they never received it, even though I emailed it. So I had to re-email, you know, my submission to them. So, and, and then there was uh, the one in, in the States, <clears throat> they wanted something to do with horror with um, Arizona. So I had the story in some other U.S. Southern state. I don't know if it was Utah or whatever, because it had to be kind of deserty. And so then I changed it to Arizona or whatever state it was and, and sent it to them. So we'll, we'll see if uh, how that works. And, and then another anthology, it had to do with... Uh, transformation of your body and uh, I can't remember which trip I was coming from uh, last year and on the plane I came up with an idea for uh, this short horror story so uh, I wrote it and uh, sent it to them but but some markets they're very specific the, they only want you know, writers from Australia, that sort of thing. You know, they they don't want anybody outside of their their country, which is kind of weird. Well, why would you post it, you know, worldwide if you only want it from Australia? Right. <laughs> it's so hard to, especially, you know, when you've got an idea or you've already written something along those lines. <coughs> And then there's those stories that you've written and, and it's very hard to find a market for because, you know, uh, um, the literary journals don't want, you know, horror or anything too kooky. They want like nice stories. And if you're not mentally bent that way, Because my my uh, my latest uh, short story that was accepted, the one that I said, you know, part crime, part horror, depending how you look at it. Uh, when I read it to my uh, online um, children's writing group, <laughs> they were horrified. <laughs> <because> <laughs> they they didn't like the ending at all, and and it had to do with guns and. Uh, it was for a gun anthology, and and uh, the editor. Oh, I really like this story. Well, I'm glad she liked it because, of course, children's writers don't like it, even though there was children in it. I thought they'd like the idea because there was children in it. No, no, they didn't like that at all. The ending <laughs> it was too violent for them. So that's why they keep saying keep 
you know, submitting because what's good for one person isn't good for another. And uh, I don't, I don't know how many, if I was up to 20 submissions before this one got accepted. And I, that's why I like talking to different people because they tell me stories and then you never know how you can, you know, turn it into a story or, or part of a book or, or whatever. There was this very um, straight-laced gentleman who, who owned this very successful insurance company. And, and uh, I was uh, telling him about this uh, one script I was writing, and he told me something from his, uh, when he was a teenager and, and going into uh, a store to buy condoms. And, and I put the story into this, uh, the script, and then uh, every so often, whenever I saw any of his new employees, I said, "Oh, go ask your uh, the president of your company to to tell you what he did when he was a teenager." <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say what he did with condoms in in the the in the pharmacy. <laughs> he probably regretted telling me that story, but I never told anybody you know, exactly what he did, but I wrote about it in, in this story. Right. I'm, I'm editing that story right now because uh, I, I want to send, send it out again. Because um, in, in Hamilton, we have um, writers in, in residence in our libraries that's uh, uh, brought on once a year. Do you have that in the States, Kristen? Um, like a, a well-known writer that's brought into your library? Uh, well, actually, uh, several years ago, I, met, I saw Elmore Leonard before he passed away. We were doing a book site. I don't think there's any like, writers and residents at libraries. Oh, at residents. No. Yeah, because they, they bring in these writers for about six months, and then you can set up appointments and send them your work ahead of time, uh, and they read your work, and then they comment on it. So this uh, uh, teen sex comedy that I wrote, I said, nobody's, you know, um, liking it because it's not relating to modern day kids because it has to do with the the 70s the mm -hmm. story takes place in the 70s and so the writer says well start the story off that the grandmother's talking to her granddaughter about it <laughs> you know so then instead of a teen sex comedy it becomes a nostalgia teen sex comedy <laughs> So I, I'm I'm trying to weave in the grandmother talking to her granddaughter through the story, so so it kind of makes more more sense. Mm -hmm. So anything else anybody wants to talk about or share? I'm interested in your short movies quite a bit. <laughs> My it's, movies? Yeah, I'm interested in your shark movies quite a bit. Shark movie? Yeah, like the shark movies you were talking about. Yeah, it's called Marina Monster. So uh, you can uh, see the trailer on my um, YouTube channel, Christine J. Whitlock, if you go to that. Okay. So, uh, I think that came out in 2006. You might have seen it. Have we seen that? I think so. You made that? You wrote that? Yeah, Marina I Monster. wrote, directed, and produced that, yes. Oh my gosh, we watched that. That was you. Yeah, I remember we saw it was that back before Netflix was <laughs> streaming. Was when we, when it was on Netflix. Yes, it was on Netflix. Uh, I think when we saw it, it, it was still it, when D Netflix was sending DVDs by mail. Oh. I remember that was one of the ones I, I got. 
Oh. Yeah, if, if it's Marina Monster, that's me. Yeah, I remember that. About um, a shark attacking during and around the bay race. Uh -huh. yep. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With all those victims, 40 victims. Yeah, there are a lot. <laughs> some of them, I say some of them buffet style. Uh -huh. Remember when they were on the pier and they all fell in and it got eaten? Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. If you wanted it, if you do any more shark films, I wouldn't mind being on No, I'm not producing anymore. <laughs> Just <All> writing. Right. <laughs> well, that's what I was saying about uh, writing. The sequel to that would be with that lamp reels. The, those eels that have that big teeth in their mouth. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they stick on to you and, and I guess, like vampires suck the juice out of you, the yeah. blood and juice. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to find out somebody who's got one of my movies. I know, it's pretty fun. <laughs> and, and I have a cameo in that movie during the barbecue scene. Okay. Oh. At the end, they have a, an awards and, and a barbecue scene. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm the, the person who's uh, doing the barbecue. Well, we'll have to look at it. Yeah, it's been, it's been <laughs> at least 10 years since we've seen it. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, that came out in 2006. Yeah. Well, if uh, no one no one has anything else to to say or contribute, I'll uh, send you a reminder next month when when we have this, and uh, hopefully we'll have some new things to talk about and uh, mm -hmm. new resources and get some new bodies to. Uh, uh, tell us what they're doing too when you progressed in, in whatever you're doing and hopefully you know we'll have some more uh, better outlook with this COVID thing going on right yeah hopefully I do good well have a great rest of your evening and um, I'll send you a notice when um, this is this is up. Um, this recording is up, and uh, where it is on uh, the YouTube website, so you can click on that and uh, look at it again. And so, uh, like I said, hope to see you next month. Then, okay. Bye okay. for now. Bye. Bye. Thanks for coming. Yes. Yeah.